Now that we know how to define variables based on different data types, let's see what we can do with these variables. We can use the variables to store a value for us that we can use in different parts of our code, or we can just have some mathematical operations done on our variable. Let's look at a mathematical operation, uh, a very simple mathematical operation that we can do uh, with our variables. So let's say we have uh, an integer type variable named x, and let's say the value that's stored in it is 30. Let's say we have another integer, y, and the value that's stored in it is, let's say, 3. Now we want to see what would the result be if x is multiplied by y. So we want to print that result out. Let's say, uh, well, whenever we want to print anything in Java, we use this command, system.out.println, and whatever we want to print, we put those things inside the parentheses. So now we want to see the result when x is multiplied with y. So we just write down x multiplied with y. Now this is the multiplication operator, and uh, we can have a lot of different types of operators that can be done between x and y, and we'll look at them in detail in this video. But before that, let's see what the result of this program here would be. Run the program, and as you can see, the result is 90, because if x is multiplied by y, that means 30 is being multiplied, multiplied by 3, the result would be 90. Very simple stuff. Uh, I hope you understand and don't have any confusions regarding these things. Let's look at some basic operators that we can have in Java. We can have a multi multiplication operator, we can have a division operator, we can have an addition operator, a subtraction operator, and a modulo operator. That's how we spell it. This basically gives you the remainder when you divide two variables. Uh, so for example, here, if y was, let's say, uh, 25, and if we divided, or if we had x modulo y, then the result would have been 5, because if you divide 30 by 25, the remainder comes out as 5. So this actually gives you the remainder. Multiplication, division, addition, and subtraction are very simple things, and I'm sure uh, we don't have to go through uh, each of those examples. But let's look at this right now. So we have two integers, a and b. a is 20, b is 10. And we want to print out the value of a plus b. Now, this example shows you that you can actually concatenate different things in the print statement. So right now, at first, I want to print out this string. I want to print out value of a plus b is, and then I want to concatenate the results of a plus b with this string. And that's what uh, would be printed out. So let's see what the result of uh, this program would be. So you see, at first it printed out exactly what we asked it to print out. It printed out value of a plus b, and then we also included a space here. So it printed out a space here as well, and then it printed out the result of a plus b. A was 20, B is 10, so the result of this would give us 30. Again, a very simple example of how you can print things and uh, how you can have uh, mathematical operations in action. So these are the basic operators uh, that we have. We can also have relational operators. Relational operators as are used to compare two variables with each other. Equal to, equal to. If we have two equal to signs together, this operator allows us to see 
whether or not two variables are equal to each other. The return that we'll get from this statement would be a Boolean. And remember, a Boolean is either true or false. So uh, let's look at one of the examples here. Uh, but before that, let's actually try and explain the other types of relational operators that are there as well. So this means not equal to. Whenever we have an exclamation sign, that usually means not in Java. So if two variables are not equal to each other, if we want to test whether two variables are not equal to each other, then we use this operator. This operator is used to see whether or not one variable is less than the other. This, this operator's uh, operator is used to see if one variable is less than or equal to the other. This is a greater than operator and this is a greater than or equal to operator. So again, let's look at an example in code. Here again, we have two variables. Both of them are integer types. And if you define these variables in the same line, then you only have to state the type of variable once, given that both of these variables of the, are of the same type. So A and B are both of integer data type. So we only had to state int once because we defined these variables in the same line or in the same statement. Um, great, so A is 20, B is 10. And we just want to print out the different results of uh, these different operators. So let's look at the first line, this, this first statement. What is happening here? At first, we're asking it to print something. What are we asking it to print? At first, we're just asking it to print the string. A equal equal B, uh, then there's a space, then there's a colon, and that's it. So at first, it'll print this out. It could be anything. It could be anything you write down here. But because we want the output to look nice and we want to know what the out which output belongs to which operator we print we want to print uh, this uh, before we print out the result of a and b being compared to each other using the equal to operator so this would print out either true or false based on the operator here now a is 20 b is 10 of course they're not equal so this would give us false. Basically, the return that we're getting from this, the result or the return that we're getting from this statement is a Boolean. And a Boolean is either true or false. In the same way, most relational operators will give us a Boolean output. It would either return false or it would return true. Here we're testing whether A is less than B. This should, this should be false. Here we're testing if A is less than or equal to B. This should also be false. Is A greater than B? This should be true. Is A greater than or equal to B? This should be true as well. Is A not equal to B? This should be true as well. So let's run this program and see whether or not what we uh, predicted is correct. As you can see, A equal to equal to B is false because they're not equal. A is less than B, well, that is not true, so it's false. A is not less than or equal to B, that is also false. A is greater than B, that is true. A is greater than or equal to B, that is also true. And A is not equal to B is also true. So this is the, these are the outputs that we were getting. And this is just the string that we printed uh, by ourselves just to understand which output belongs to which condition. Now, let's say I did not print this, and I'm concatenating this integer with this output using the operator plus. Now, plus can be used inside the print statement to concatenate or join uh, two uh, things. So I am joining this string with the output, and that's what's being, uh, what's being printed out here. Um, so let's say I did not concatenate anything here. What would the output be? You see, it would just print out false. 
because uh, there's nothing else that I asked to uh, ask this statement to print before the result of this statement. Uh, so again, for our own sake, uh, for our own understanding, which result belongs to which operator, it's better if we uh, specify that in the beginning with just a string that we write by ourselves. Great, now you understand the different relational operators as well. Now let's move on to logical operators. What, does lo what do logical operators do? There are two different types of logical operators. There is an AND operator and there is an OR operator. If two sides of, uh, before that, here, when we were comparing two variables, there was the left side and the right side, and the relational operator was in the middle. The whole thing gave us a Boolean value, either true or false. For relational operators, the left side or right side themselves have to give us either true or false. So right side would either be false or true, left side would either be false or true as well. Sorry, right is here, left is here. Uh, so actually, if we try and look at a couple of examples, then we'll understand exactly what's happening. But keep in mind that for AND, the result would also be, uh, for these logical operators, the result would also be a Boolean. Ultimately, the result of these operators would give us true or false. AND would give us true if both sides are true or would give us true if any one of these sides is true. If any one of the sides for AND is false, then our result would also be false. For logical operator, we'll only get a false result if both of the sides are false. So let's see uh, this in action by looking at a couple of examples. Great, so let's define a few Boolean type variables. Let's say I have a Boolean X, which is true. What can be true? I think dogs are awesome. That's a true statement. So uh, let's say Boolean X is true. This is just so that you have some mnemonic in your mind or some, something in your mind that relates to a statement that is true. Uh, let's say we have another variable named y, which is false. So if someone says spiders are cute, I think that is categorically false. Uh, and so you can think of y as uh, that statement. Of course, these are just comments. They don't necessarily uh, relate to the code. Let's say we have a third variable named z, and that is true as well. And let's say uh, the statement that we want to associate with this is coding is easy with practice. Uh, of course, it will be pretty difficult if you don't practice. <laughs> so uh, we have a fourth variable named A, and let's say that is false as well. Now, we want to see what the results would be if we uh, use the logical operators on these variables. Now, at first, we want to test X and y. So x and and y would be the statement that would give us the result that we are looking for. Uh, we want to see how uh, the result would turn out if we use the and operator with x and y. Now x is true, y is false. For and, both of these things need to be true in order for our result to be true. Since y is false, this result would give us false z is true, x is also true. Having an AND operator in between them would give us true, because both of them are true. y is false, z is true, of course, this would give us false. With OR, any one of them being true will give us true. Now, x and y, here x is true, y is false, so if we OR x and y, then uh, if we OR X with Y, then the result would be true because X is true. Again, here X is true. It doesn't really matter what this is. 
Uh, but since z is true as well, this will also give us true. y or z would actually give us true as well because z is true even though y is false. This statement would give us true. Since a and y are both false, this statement would give us false when we use the OR operator between y and a. So let's see if our predictions are correct. Let's run the program and see uh, what the results are. As you can see, x and y is false, x and z are true, y and z are false, uh, x or y comes out to be true, x or z comes out to be true, y or z comes out to be true, y is false, a is false. So when you uh, use the OR operator, the result would be false. And that is how you use relational operators. Let's move on to the next thing. So now uh, we have understood the different types of operators uh, that can be used in Java. We have relational operators, we have logical operators, and we have some basic mathematical operators. Now let's move on to control statements.